Hello guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Matthias, aka Progenal Gans. First of all, I'm really sorry that I've been so inactive lately. It's been um, two months since the last release and I really do not have other explanations besides that I've been working on the upcoming releases and they have been taking all of my time, all of my free time. This work is going to be my best work so far but I'm not working on it alone. I have a bunch of so talented and creative artists working with me, creating these collaborations, creating these releases. The visuals are looking so good and the tracks are absolute bangers. So I really do believe that the weight is worth it and I can't wait to show these. I think we are going to have some announcements in week or two so stay in tune for those but now let's not waste any more time let's get to the pad tutorial and start layering some pads oh and just to recap the tutorial like i'm going to show you how to layer pads for your edm tracks create really cool atmospheric background elements for your tracks how to mix them i'm going to show you two really cool mixing chains or like plugin chains so you can use the free one or my preferred one so stay tuned for those be sure to like and hit the subscribe and let's dive to this tutorial i'm here in fl studio and i have this following chord progression it's f major to g major to a minor and then C major and this is what it sounds like. Now since we are working with pads I really don't want too much chord movement between octaves so what I'm going to start with is to smooth this out a little bit by using inversions of chords and in this tutorial we won't have enough time to go through inversions and uh, music theory but basically inside of chord you are able to move individual notes down or up octaves so as an example, looking at this, this F note here on fourth octave is pretty far away. It's almost one octave away from this G note. So to have more consistent sound, I'd probably want to move this G note down an octave. And we can hear, listen to that change here. So that was the old and this is the new one. It's still the same C major chord but a different inversion. Now I'm going to copy this chord progression and mute this piano and paste the chord progression on our Vidal pad instance. On Vidal I'm going to use or to say a melodic dubstep preset pack and there's some really cool packs in this preset pack so let's scroll through them and try to find something cool to start building on I like this frozen blood one. So we have the frozen blood pad selected and we have our chords. 
Now this is going to be the like the baseline for our pad sound. So I'm going to start by taking out delays and reverbs from this patch since we are going to be using multiple instances of Vital to build this pad. So we don't want too many conflicting delays and reverbs. At the later part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys a basic pad effect chain. And then I'm also going to be showing like my special technique of spicing up the pads, some little bit more advanced VSTs, paid stuff, but the basic version sounds really cool and that mostly uses free or stock plugins. So we have the reverbs and delays taken off. I'm going to hold control and shift and I'm going to choose all of these middle notes, press control C and then delete them. And I'm going to go to our next instance of Vital and paste the notes over here. Let's mute the second instance for now and listen to what we have on the first instance. It's pretty raw sound, but it fits as a baseline for our tutorial. Now let's go to the second instance of Vital. And I'm going to go again to the pad folder of, or just say a melodic dubs the preset pack. And we are going to try to find something that complements our first pad. Clouds breaking, that sounds cool. Let's pick that and again go to the effects, take out the reverbs and delays and let's listen to what we have now. Now we could try to spread these notes a little bit so let's drag the second pads notes up an octave and let's listen to it maybe try something like this Now, uh, for our third instance of Vital, I'm going to pick a sub bass or kind of the base layer of our pad. So let me just quickly find, maybe let's use this one, Reese from the depths. And we are going to copy the bass notes from our uh, chord progression and paste them over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delete them from the first pad instance so right now we have these chords or notes on the first pad the second one has these and then we have the bass layer so let's play through this And I'm going to low pass, I'm going to low pass these 
bases and a little bit more. Like that. This is the basic layout for now. And we could move to the effects. And I'm going to show you some basic stuff, how to fit all of this inside of your mixes and then go to the more creative effects. Now I'm going to paste all of these on our playlist and delete our original code progression. We have the pads here and I'm going to start creating some movement inside of this code. So we are starting by going to the first pad and we have this cutoff macro. And I'm going to go to this knob over here, right click it and go to create automation clip. And now I have the cutoff macro over here in this playlist clip. And we are going to create this sort of a slope like this. Then I'm going to automate this step knob. It's automates some of these parameters and kind of modulates the sound. So right click, create automation clip, and we have the macro two over here. Let's try something like this. I think that's great. Now let's go to the second pad. And I'm going to actually just link this one to the first pad's automation clip. So I'm going to wiggle this filter, click over here and go to the link controller. Now in this drop down menu I'm going to choose macro 1 which is cut off of the first pad and be sure that this one is turned off and now click the accept and right now we should have both of these cutoffs following the automation over here. Then I'm going to go to the base layer, the pad 3. And for this one, I'm going to do a different cutoff automation. So create an automation clip and we have it over here. And with this one, I want a little bit less opening. Like that. I think that's great starting point. Now we can move to the mixing part. And I'm going to start by some basic mixing, try to blend this together a little bit more. And then we are moving to the creative effects. So here I have a pad mix bus group and all of these three pads over here. Each one of them is routed to the pad mix, which is then going out. So let's begin with the first pad. 
I'm going to apply some EQ, taking out some of the highs. And taking out some of the lows. Now on the second one, I'm going to take out most of the lows. And some of the highs. And then on the pad tree, I'm going to just very lightly duck down the mids. Now, let's listen to the changes. First, this is without these EQ changes. And this is with them. It's already sounding so much better. Now, with pads, I generally like to apply some stereo widening. And for this, you have a lot of different choices. Wider is really great free plugin. Then you have Ozone stuff. Ozone Imager, I believe, is free also. And bunch of other but we could just add the wider and do about 20% but let's let's try to listen to the effect like that and I'm going to actually pull down the stereo separation of our base layer so make it a little bit more centered usually it's also good practice to add some sort of bus EQ to kind of blend everything together a little bit more so And we're going to listen to that change. I'm just kind of slightly taking out some of the low end, some of these low meets slash meet and boosting meets slash high meets. Also taking out more of the top end. With pads, you kind of usually want them to blend out to the background of the track, not to be in front of all the other elements. They are sort of a supporting element in tracks. And lastly, you could maybe add some um, saturation or compression, like maybe OTT, maybe even like something like um, Saturator, Sortage Pattern, or Sound Goodizer. So, like, if we just want to do something really basic with stock plugins, I'm going to pick the Sound Goodizer, draw it there on the. in front of everything on the pad mix. And let's listen to that change. That's it for the like kind of the basic setup. Now, what you could also do is to apply some panning. 
and for this I'm going to use fruity panomatic and this one is a kind of sort of like Ableton auto panner or auto pan here we have a LFO that the panning is going to be following so I'm going to choose pan and here we have speed and amount so if we draw the amount to the full the effect is very audible now I want something a little bit slower and a little bit less noticeable so let's listen Let's start with the creative effects. As I promised, I'm going to show you a more basic free version which uses stock plugins and free plugins. And after that, I'm going to show you my preferred effect chain for pads. It has a couple paid plugins, so we are going to start with free one. Now, the really obvious thing to add is reverb so i'm going to use 3d reverb 2 by having the wet all the way up and the dry down we are able to listen to just the reverb So what I'm doing is I uh, took out some of the lows, some of the highs, pumped up the DK and took away a little bit of bass. Now I'm going to apply some stereo separation and then play with the dry and wet. So, without the reverb and with the reverb. Now you could also add reverb and I really do not want to add reverb on my bass synth so I'm going to go to the pad one I'm going to choose fruit delay and we are going to go for ping pong delay The next thing I'm going to add is Fruit Chorus. And I'm going to really pull this down to about 15 to 10 percent.
Now we could try to add a little bit of OTC. This is a free plugin. And with pads, you want to really be careful. But let's just try very lightly bringing all of this together and bringing out more of the quieter elements. Now, if you really want to go crazy with the reverbs, we could actually make this reverb a little bit shorter and add a free reverb called Valhalla Supermassive. And with this, you have a lot of presets to choose from and try out. Like, there is some really crazy effects in this plugin, but I'm going to just pick the forward reverb from the B medium category and let's try that one. sounds really large now. So this is the end result. Here is without any of the effects. And here is with the effects. Now the second chain I promised to show you is what I would use on my tracks and with that we have a little bit more like creative freedom just with the effects of course like by modifying the pads and adding different elements with the synths you could do some of this stuff and like achieve similar results. These are just some of the plugins that I really like on pads. So let's start by adding a disperser from kilohertz. And then I'm going to copy it and paste it above the original. And then we could throw in OTT to bring out those details. Then I'm going to add one of my favorite reverb plugins, which is called Valhalla Shimmer. I'm going to change few of these parameters. I'm also going to add Valhalla Vintage Verb.
and then I'm going to add a little bit of crystallizer. This is a really cool granular echo synthesizer. So basically we are adding delay. And with this, let's just quickly try one of these presets. I'm liking this rain delay, it's adding these little granular bits. I'm going to pull it down. So that it's, it's barely audible into overall mix. Then I'm going to do some mid-side EQing. I'm going to pull the bases to mono. And I'm going to pump up the mids And I'm going to pump up the side band of the meats and tops. Now we still have one more slot, so maybe we could try to add a Micro shift. This is really great plugin. I love this. So let's pick one of my favorite presets, which is lead vocal clarity. And let's listen to it with the full mix. This is pretty cool. Now, now that's it. Let's listen without the effects and with the effects. So this is without the effects. And this is with the effects. Now you could go so much more deeper by automating all these effects and adding a bunch of little bleeps and blobs and plugs and all of that on top of these pads, but we really don't have time for that today. So, and I hope you learned something valuable from this tutorial as mentioned. Stay tuned for the updates about the upcoming releases, they are going to be so good. 
and also be sure to check out the description for links to Black Lotus Audio. In this tutorial I used presets from Black Lotus Audio's melodic dubstep preset pack called Odyssea. So check that out and use my discount link below to get a nice discount from all of their products. See you guys on the next tutorial.